let's check out this equation here of x squared is equal to 16. And so what we're really asking ourselves is what could I plug in for x to make this true? So what squared would equal to 16? And so uh, we could either kind of think about it and think about a number we could plug in to see what we could get, or we can think about how would I algebraically uh, solve this for x or basically get x alone by getting rid of that square. So how would I somehow get rid of that squared so that I have just x? And what we need to do is the reverse operation of squaring something, which happens to be taking the square root. And what the square root does is it reverses a square. So it will now cancel out and I will get to just x like I want. Okay, but if I take the square root of the left side of an equation, then I have to take the square root of the right side of an equation. Okay, now I do wanna point out something here uh, that people make a mistake on. So I see this uh, fairly often that people will say, okay, well, what's the square root of 16? And sometimes they say, oh, I think it's eight, but it's not eight. So what they're thinking when they think that is kind of like 16 divided by two, uh, but that's not quite right. So the square root of 16 is not eight. When we say we're gonna take the square root, what we're saying is what times itself gets me to 16 and four times itself gets me to 16 and that's good that's an answer but it's actually not the only answer there is another one as well so what if we said well okay four times four is 16 right that works but then what about if i think of four in a different way and i say well what about negative four because negative four times negative four is a positive 16. So there's actually two solutions here. And another way to write the same thing here, instead of x equals four and negative four, is I can just put them together and I can basically say, well, the answer is four, both kinds of fours, positive and negative. And so I can write that the answer is plus or minus four. And so to kind of move quicker, uh, through some of these problems when we're kind of getting more practice with them is we can just say if I'm going to take the square root of both sides so whenever I take the square root of both sides let me just kind of highlight that here whenever we take the square root of both sides we always want to make sure we remember to write plus or minus on the next step so one more time whenever you take the square root of both sides make sure that you write plus or minus on the next step so if I just kind of like come up with another example here, so we, if we say, you know, x squared um, is equal to, uh, say, 25, okay, now I want to get x by itself, so that means I want to undo the square. How do we undo a square? By taking the square root. So a square and a square root will cancel out. If I do it on the left, I want to do it on the right, and then we're like, oh yeah, so the square root of 25 is 5, you know, that's easy, but then wait, hold up. I just took the square root of both sides. So then we gotta make sure that I write plus or minus. And again, the reason for that is, is because positive five times positive five, well, that would get me to 25. But then negative five times negative five would also get me to 25. So that's why this represents two solutions, both a positive five and a negative five. Let's think about another kind of question here. And so uh, here I have x squared is equal to negative 25. So if I want to solve this, I'm going to do the same thing. I want to take the square root because that will undo the square, which is good. And then I'm going to take the square root of the other side as well. So now I'm at just x. That side's looking good. Okay, and then over here, let's think about this. So what we're thinking about is what number times itself will get me to a negative 25. So we're going to say what number times itself will get me to a negative 25. So let's try out a couple things here. Um, I don't know, how about like five? It seems like something around five-ish should kind of work. But if I do that, well, that's five times five. Well, that would be a positive 25. Okay, so that doesn't quite work. Uh, let's go, you know, negative, I guess. So negative times negative. Well, a negative times a negative would actually be a positive. So that doesn't work either. So then the only thing that would sort of work here is if we had one negative and one positive. But that doesn't really fit the definition of taking a square root 
because when we take the square root, then we're saying what number times itself the exact same thing uh, to get to that value. So there's no way uh, to get to a negative 25 because I would have to have two different signs. And by definition, I'm looking for two of the same signs. And so there's actually no way to really solve this problem. And so if we kind of think about uh, the root of this problem, then the most basic example would be to think of the square root of negative one. And so since we kind of ran into this problem here of taking the square root of a negative and we couldn't really come up with an answer um, in our regular numbers, but it actually does come up in real life and we have to be able to deal with it. So essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to come up with a name for it. So we're going to come up with a name for the square root of negative one that's kind of hard to deal with and we're just going to call it I. And it stands for imaginary, uh, but you know that's kind of up to your interpretation whether you want to consider it imaginary or not. But let's just go ahead and call it I. And so this is kind of our big definition here that the square root of negative one is going to be defined as I. And so once we have that definition, then we can actually deal um, with all these types of equations. So if we have, say, if we're going to take, say, the square root, well, you know what, let's just go ahead and stick with the same problem for right now. Let's just say, okay, we had this equation that we couldn't previously solve. Uh, so we were going to take the square roots, and then we have just x, and then, so we're trying to get around this thing, but if we have the square root of negative 25, well, what if I think of that as, say, the square root of negative 1 times 25? Because negative 1 times 25 is negative 25, right? So I'm okay on this next step. And let's go ahead and uh, check out what I can do with this. So maybe, first of all, what are we familiar with? So I can take the square root of 25, and that's easy. So the square root of 25 is just 5. And then wait a second. So here we have the square root of negative 1 now. Well, what is the square root of negative 1? We defined it. What do we call it? We said that was that weird funky thing where we kind of ran into an issue, but we have to be able to deal with it. So let's give it a name. And that name is i. And we're just about there, but hold up, wait a minute. What did we do here? We took the square root. We took the square root of both sides. And then so what do we have to consider there? Well, remember, whenever we take the square root of both sides, we have to consider both the positive and the negative root. So I'm going to give myself just a little bit more room here. And when we take this, the square root of both sides, it has to be plus or minus. And so notice that that i came from the square root of negative 1. So the square root of negative 1 turned into i. However, the plus or the minus came from taking the square root of both sides. So let's just check out maybe one more example here. So if I say, uh, you know, we have x squared is equal to um, maybe negative, uh, let's go 49, okay? Okay, we're gonna take the square root of both sides. We now have just x, and then the square root of seven, or 49 is seven, and then the square root of the negative 1 is i. And then since I took the square root of both sides, then that's going to give me that plus or minus. And there we go.